can you see my screen? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, welcome. Welcome, Masters. Thank you for taking your time. Is it in the slideshow, sir? Yeah, now it is in the slideshow. Yes. Thank you each and everyone for taking your time and being here to listen to the story of Yashodra. And welcome to the session four of The Buddha's Wife by Janet Suri and Samuel Shee. Every story starts with the first step. The Buddha's first step is to go alone, to face the inner world of suffering with awareness. Yashodra's first step is going into relationship to save the suffering with others. Vindhya ma'am has beautifully introduced us to the authors and the characters of the story. Let me give you a quick recap of the story. Before that, alone I can say, but together we can talk. Alone, I can enjoy, but together we can celebrate. Alone, I can smile, but together we can laugh. So we know that Siddhartha and Yashodra, who were madly in love, done every act together for 13 years before they had a beautiful baby boy who they named Rahula. One day, Siddhartha stumbles upon four types of sorrow which are sickness, old age, death, and a monk. When he goes out of the kingdom for the first time and sets him to think, am I going to suffer? In that mindset, leaves everything behind, searching for answers alone, without even saying a word or a goodbye to his beloved wife, Yashodra. Yashodra is not sure where Siddhartha went. When is he going to come back? Is he going to come back? What has caused him to leave? Did she cause him to leave? Siddhartha leaves suddenly without any proper communication. Where does this leave Yashodra? Leaves her in a state of shock and denial, withdrawing her into her own world. She has difficult questions. What happened to the plants they built together? Were they empty promises? Is it because of the baby they named Rahula, meaning fetter? What is the baby's fault? Should she follow him, leaving the baby behind? Should she do it? Can she do it? These are all going in her mind and she was not able to accept. So let's see what happened next. So she's thinking, what mistake did I do? Not able to reconcile, became bitter, angry, withdrawn. There was no respite for her bitterness, guilt and shame, and would not come out of her quarters. This was becoming too painful for the palace woman who were taking care of her baby and her. Withdrawing from the baby and the world and only has questions, not able to see beyond not able to find answers. Extreme suffering comes at least once in everyone's life. So Prajapati, who had a similar experience when she lost her sister Maya during childbirth of Siddhartha, rose up to the occasion and became a mother to Siddhartha and queen to the palace. She understood that Yashodra's grief was so deep that she cannot hold it alone such a traumatic loss and wanted to help Yashodra. Not like a mother-in-law, but like a mother. So we all have our own thoughts about mother-in-law, right? But here, Yashodra, seeing Yashodra going through such grief, her mother-in-law, Prajapati, was ready to help her like a mother. So fortunate she is, right? She rose up to the occasion once again, and women in the palace were emotionally touched and ready to move into some way in being with Yashodra. 
So Prajapati arranged for all of the women of the palace to gather at dawn in the pine groves beside a small Hindu temple where Yashodra and Siddhartha had made offerings and prayers before she became pregnant because they were waiting so long to have a baby. The women of the palace and servants were waiting and Prajapati entered with Yashodra, supporting her by the arm. The women gathered around Yashodra in a closed circle. In a gesture of honoring and opening to her pain, they began to chant Hindu prayers. It was as if the energies existing around were being called to meet the desperate Yashodra and the circle around her. Let's all close our eyes for a moment and imagine to be part of that circle with Yashodra in the center and try to connect to her with Deepa Ma'am's beautiful prayer. Deepa Ma'am. Yes. Let's all join Yashodara's circle or Sangha here and pray together. Itni shakti hame de na data Man ka vishwas kamzor ho na Itni shakti So the prayers and the shared chants, the moments of silence seem to gather the deep energies of earth and nature to focus it among the circle of women. See, when you are sitting in group meditation, 
we all feel those energies, right? The energies of the nature focusing at the center of the circle. So, Yashodra's tears seemed unending. She wept in silence. The gathering in the morning did not last long because all the women had to attend to their duties. But that gathering had a calming effect on Yashodra. So they decided to meet again at dusk and a simple ritual practice seemed to take shape. The morning prayers asking for help and courage for the day and the evening gathering was to give thanks and gratitude for the daily care. So this is how the first circle was formed with the intention to help Yashodra. So asking help, not just for themselves, but for everyone in the circle, asking for help, giving thanks, gratitude every morning and every evening. They called it this gathering at the grove, eventually, which paved the way the impact of sitting together, their circle of compassion. So the first circle, the circle of compassion was formed with an intention to help Yashodra come out of her shell, shell of grief and pain. As the circumstances were not her fault, right? And how did she, how is she going to come out of her pain? Let's see that. Asking for help and giving thanks, asking, giving, day after day, without any exception, no matter what. They were doing this ritual, no matter what. And finally, a day came when Yashodra began to find words to speak about her grief and her pain. And once she started speaking, she wouldn't stop. She would tell her story repeatedly again and again in circles, venting out her pain. That deep was her injury because they were so deep in love, she and Siddhartha, right? First, the women in the circle listened intently, but after a while, it became a burden for the woman, hearing the same thing again and again. All that negative energy was spoiling the mood of the circle. Prajapati realized that Yashodra needed not only to speak, but to listen and listen deeply. She wanted to help Yashodra to understand that and once again took control of the situation. Let just listen to what Prajapati said to Yashodra. She said, Dear one, the only thing in your mind is your grief, circling and circling without end. You are obsessed with it. Any obsession is a turning away of living from life itself. The only way out to come out is through being in relationship with others. Yashodra says, I don't know how, how to, how to do that now. What else can I say? People who are listening, they have not suffered like me, so publicly shamed in front of the whole world. Hajatpati says, that's how you see it, my dear, and that's all you see. You would be surprised at what other women in the circle have lived through, especially the older ones like me. Not just shame, but much more and much worse. And Yashodra wanted to help them, but did not know how. Prajapati tells her to do nothing, but to listen to what other women have to say. Yashodra says doing nothing would destroy her. And Prajapati says, let me finish. But Yashodra wanted to go down her usual path of bitter words and resentment, but stopped herself and asked Prajapati to go on. Prajapati says, do nothing except what you are doing right now. And what's that? Listening. Just listen. And you need not lift even a finger. Just listen and take it in what the other person is saying, feeling, and being. And she didn't need to say anything. Prajapati asked Yashodra, can you do that? Silence your mind to receiving others. Yashodra was angry at this condescension, treating her like a child, but agreed. 
In the following days in the circle, each of the women began to share their own stories and daily learnings and experiences because she was now ready to listen, listen to other people's story, right? So periods of speaking and listening became the rhythm of the circle. Earlier, it was only Yashodhara telling her story again and again. Now, once he started listening, she was listening to other people's stories. And that became the rhythm of the circle. And they became part of a ritual. Wisdom and compassion grew. Yashodra came to see their circle as sacred, holding all of them with love and compassion. Compassion arose like fire in the forest, burning down the undergrowth of their minds. It held them with warmth, infusing each other with that clarity. Each became a part of the whole, no longer separate, but illuminated by each other. Because each story is a learning or is a lesson to the other. Right? So each is being illuminated, each is illuminating the other person in the circle. After that realization, Yashodra no longer sat in the center of the circle. She moved to the path, she moved to be part of the circle and joined in the turning to other women in the circle. That is when Yashodra began to heal. So the healing started. When she turned and faced other women in the circle. Prajapati came to understand that something of great value beyond what she even has imagined has been created. So beautiful, right? She saw that the circle as a well of compassion, able to create new energy, new life, new understanding and wisdom. Heart of each person opening, becoming a channel of that compassion and the whole circle infused with it. And energy, wisdom, compassion available to not just Yashodra, but each and everyone in the circle. See how the circle is progressing. First, the intention was to help Yashodra. Now, with that listening, that deep listening, and now she is a part of the circle, and that wisdom is available to each and every one, illuminating each and every one in the circle. And such circle practices and the history of circle practices have been uh, around for ancient times where people across the globe developed circle practices, many which are still alive even until now. For example, the stone hedges, the most architecturally sophisticated and only surviving uh, stone circle in the world and the Tibetan mandalas, that is a representation like sand mandalas are so profound. Once the sand mandalas are complete, they are destroyed. The colored sand collected in an urn and they dispersed into the flowing water as to symbolize the impermanence of life. And the Native American medicine circle, the medicine wheel, sometimes known as the sacred hoop, has been used by generations of various Native American tribes for health and healing. And people sat around the campfire form warmth experiment the power of the shared ritual gathering energies of the nature and belonging and listen deeply to each others. And others join the circle over time. It enlarges holding the 10,000 joy and the 10,000 sorrows of the community. Today, these healing circles can also be used to create sacred space to meditate together the family itself can be considered a circle or a family sangha. Moments or times of grief, that circle, that family circle, that existing group can, be, can, can transform into the circle of compassion. And other people who want to help them can join that circle. That was ancient times and like the Hindu sacred circle, the Sri Chakra, where whenever temples are being constructed or when we are performing a ritual at home too, you know, the, it's, we do the rituals to energize that space. And these have been there for quite long. And when we talk about these times, the contemporary circles, 
and the evolution of the contemporary circles, the fellowship, the group, or the meeting. The creative and momentous response to the suffering of alcoholism and addiction that arose out of the meeting between Bill Wilson and Dr. Bob on Mother's Day in 1935 gave birth to one of the most significant and spiritual program and communities in the world, which is well known to all of us called the AA or the 12 step group. Where the 12 step AA circle are a set of principles developed to individuals struggling with addiction and change their beliefs. Together, they act as a framework for sustainable recovery. The 12 steps communities of all types help provide the support and accountability many recovering addicts crave. And the 12 step principles of recovery are as follows. Admission, acceptance, recognition, submission, understanding, confession, readiness, humility, reparation, apology, integrity, meditation, and awakening. And you see addictions are not just alcohol addiction or substance addiction. You know, there are many addictions in nowadays, these modern days. For example, shopaholic, where other day one master was talking about, you know, we ladies, we want to buy gold <laughs> and saris, you know, or overeating or relationship addictions or social media and Instagram. And this is no surprise to anyone, you know, even from kids to elder people, we are all in this modern days in some or the other way addicted to WhatsApp and some kind of media, Facebook. And not just these, but there are so many other kind of addictions as well. And these groups or the meetings or the fellowship, they help such kind of people to come out of them. And uh, here, uh, if anyone wants to share their experience of addiction and how did they come out of it, I open the floor for one sharing before we move on to the next chapters that I have for today. Masters? Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Anyone wants to share their experience of addiction? Adisha, ma'am, you are unmuted. Uh, hello, masters. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I must say it's not the addiction, but uh, I'm working on my overthinking. And uh, spiritual tablet is really helping me with that. Because as soon as um, the one thought circulating in my mind, I immediately get a click that, okay, I'm, I'm going into that loop. So definitely I feel like it's an addiction for me. I'm working on it. Thank you. Beautiful, ma'am. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Yeah, Asha, ma'am, you are unmuted. Can you unmute yourself? Yes. Um, yeah, I, I do see a lot of patients in the ER with alcohol, drug addiction, drug withdrawal, drug overdose. I'm an ER doctor. I used to kind of look down upon them. And now I'm trying to have better understanding of their situation. Um, you know, I used to hate the smell, hate the look, and uh, the way they're reacting. Um, the problem is some of these people, they just come in like overdosed, almost dying. We recover them with Narcan. They get up and just walk out. They don't want any more treatment. So unless they actually ask for help, we can't do anything. That's really tough for a you know, doctor that actually cares about patients and their recovery. They're young people, you know, young, healthy, 
people just uh, under the influence of drugs and they just lose everything, their job, their parents, their family, they just disown them and they're just on the streets. And it's really heartbreaking to see that. And uh, actually one father brought in um, his uh, 16 year old son who was so into drugs that he was um, trying to keep him in his truck, taking him to work. He's a tree trimmer, a uh, tree cut cutting person. And he just took him to his work, put him in his truck, locked him up there and uh, you know, finished his work, brought him to the ER and requiring help. He couldn't afford to uh, bring him to the ER too. He didn't have any insurance or money to take care of him. So I had to find a place where they would take somebody like that. And luckily we found an Indian person that had a hospital called Centerpoint and I could refer that patient there and they actually took him. So I feel like more sympathy towards these drug addicts now, you know, than what I was before starting the spiritual, um, you know, tablet program. And um, I'm doing what I can to help them uh, more. And I think I can understand their situation better than what I used to before. I would say, okay, they're just uh, into drugs. Um, but now I'm trying to actively stop this and informing the police, trying to see if, if I can get, this, get to the source that is distributing these drugs and try to get them to stop it. Um, we are all working towards that and I'm working with the social worker that's uh, also working towards doing this. It's uh, so sad to see these hardworking parents and, um, yeah, and some of the hardworking men that lose their jobs because of this drug addiction, alcohol addiction, and uh, just a menace to the society and themselves. And they lose everything and they know that. <clears throat> They want help, but they don't know how to get help. And we are working towards doing that. Now it's just giving Narcan uh, and just say, we used to say, okay, he left, that's fine. But we are trying actively to stop um, this problem as an epidemic. It has become an epidemic in some areas of the country. And we are all actively trying to stop this problem. Um, so I just wanted to share that piece with you. Sorry to disturb the flow, but uh, I, I couldn't help but share that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your sharing, Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ashana, for sharing that before uh, uh, Ravi is going to take over. Let mm -hmm. me say, uh, in my perspective, addiction is a choice. And uh, it is an attachment. So it's an individual choice by an individual person, where irrespective of the age. So uh, it comes through some situations and all of that stuff, but uh, uh, how they have been grown up and uh, here in the Western society, there is so much has been that we have been, we, we as a Indian community, I don't want to say that one, but still, we have not been gone through that, uh, uh, what the Western society has been going through because the kids are having only a single parent, either mother or a father, but they're going through a lot. Even they have the parents and parents are so much into it. And uh, uh, the, the kids has been raised in that environment and slowly that has been got into their choices, you know, because and it's an individual choice. So uh, addiction, in a nutshell, in my theory, uh, after listening to Rowley Madden's uh, uh, session on uh, choices, you know, uh, that's an individual choice and it's an attachment. So how you are going to work on it, it's an, again, it's an individual choice to work on it because unless and until even the parents are going to be so uh, into it and if they really wanted to work with the kid, but until the kid is going to have that mindset, yep, I need to be sober and I need to come out of this, nothing is going to happen, but still you need to go through that suffering and the pain. That is what uh, my two cents are for the addiction. Thank you. And, Ravi, uh, sir. Wait, uh, Ashok, sir. Can yeah. we take more sharings towards the end of the session so that uh, oh. everyone gets to finish? Okay, sure. Yeah. Yep. Sorry, sorry about that. No, no, no problem. You please uh, carry on. 
Yes. And weeks later, a young child in the palace became ill and died suddenly. The mother, Naila, was a servant of another palace royalty. The women and men gathered at the cremation grounds. A small pile of wood, a tiny wrapped bundle, all seemed too small, fragile for death and burning too brutal and unjust. The flames finished their part too soon, much too soon. The mother of the baby refused to leave the cremation grounds, sat watching the smoke die and settle down into dust. Eventually, all men left except the father of the baby and Chenna, who has taken upon himself the supervision of the cremations. Neither the royal women nor their servants could leave the grieving mother because women are very compassionate, even men, but you know they understand what the other mother is going through, right? So their hearts as mothers and daughters were torn open to see the child whom they had all known energetic and happily playing in the garden of the palace just a few days ago, now turned into dust. If you remember the shooting that happened recently here in uh, Texas, you can just imagine how many kids have been, you know, I don't even want to go there, but you can understand the mother's pain, right? So as Yashodra, for Yashodra, the pain was even worse. Her child Rahula was healthy and happy, but realizing death could be so near, like just a tap on the shoulder, can come anytime, gone. Just as his father, gone anytime. Gone need not be death due to old age, but can come at any time suddenly, right? Gone can be due to breakups, divorce, where leaving their loved ones and family behind who suffer. That jerks a Yashodra and she starts sobbing not just for herself, but for all mothers, all sons and daughters who were born and must die, clenching in the metal of death as death is inevitable. It's just a matter of time. And night came with its the night rain. Many of the women wanted to leave, but the mother Naila refused to leave. Now, Yashodara taking action says, let's form our circle. All the women began to move and the circle began to form, starting on either side of the mother in the circle with the pile of ashes in the center. She observed that Naila's husband and Chenna were sitting apart and gestured them to join the circle, but they refused. Then Prajapati says, please come in. We invite you in. Be with your wife as we are. Yashodra stretched out her hand to Chenna. Prajapati gestured to the husband to sit with his wife. Prajapati once again shows her experience as loss of the baby is not just to the mother, but to the father as well and their families too. Understanding that loss is both for them. Grief is for both of them. They needed to be together, grieve together. Chenna sits beside Yashodra. Yashodra and Chenna have become much closer through their shared betrayal. They're sensing the doors closing on their hope to see Siddhartha again. So you see how circles have been evolving. Here, men were also welcomed into the circle of compassion. That incident broke Yashodra's heart open. The next day when Chenna came into her chambers, she said to him that her heart went out to that mother Naila and her husband and tore her apart to imagine her baby boy Rahula dying with his father Siddhartha nowhere to be found. She says to Chenna, I hated him Chenna right then. Chenna says, I sometimes do too. It's like a poison in me. I hate myself because I'm treating my wife and daughters badly and I can't seem to help it. 
See, they know what's happening with them, but they don't know what to do about that. His, work, his words shocked Yashodra. That's the shock of realization. In that moment, she realized that her hatred was poisoning her as well, was separating her from her own child. And she said to Chenna, I feel that too. I resonate with you. And at that moment, they saw things so clearly that their hatred was no longer hers or his, but was merely human. They're just being human, having all those feelings, which were, temp which were temporary, a dark cloud, which will blow past. Once that dark cloud blow past, just what is left is light, leaving light. Listening to him, and after the long day and night at the cremation grounds, she learned something, that something else began to take hold. Yashodra began to see that perhaps her enduring could help another person to endure. She's understanding that, that realization is coming to her. Now she could see that clearly, one by one, the linking of each other was opening away to the feeling of the power of love working at the heart of the universe. The law of love, as sure as the law of gravity, which we all call the universal love. Right? So Yashodra reached out to Naila, the grieving mother, who had no words nor desire to live. That's what happens, right? When we lose our loved ones. We don't want even want to go there. See, suggested that they sit side by side in the circle and it became a shared place in the circle. After a while, they began to talk a little, staying back after the circle had ended in the morning and in the evening. A few weeks later, they decided to meet more than one times during the day, sharing the intention to helping each other on a regular basis. You see for Yashodra, Siddhartha has left without saying goodbye. So she's also in grief and she understood what Naila is going through because grief uh, come in many forms. It's not just death, it's leaving and many more. A healthy bond between Naila and Yashodra, meaning friendship has started to build the art of, with the art of mutual sharing. They realized without saying it that both were held by the strength of many and the many were held by the strength of the two. Many of the women seeing this developed individual friendship of this nature. So, which we call here the buddy system, right? Have a buddy whom we can share uh, one and everything with them, each and everything. So, this became the model for all of them, what they call the spiritual friendship. Naila and Yashodra named it the spiritual friendship. They referred to each other as a spiritual friend. Yashodra realized that something has begun to change in her. Though at first she had hoped nothing more than the pain to stop, now she understood that her suffering might not come to an end. But to a new beginning, something greater than herself and her grief alone, something she had not yet seen or understood completely. She has imagined to join Siddhartha, but that is not possible. She understood. She wondered whether she could survive by trying to stay with him or erase his presence in his heart. Can, he, can she do that? Erase the presence of Siddhartha in her heart? She wondered they, whether she had a choice. In that moment, Yashodra chose to live and set out on, a, on her journey, on their journey. See, it's not just her journey, but the whole, everyone's journey. So Yashodra came to understand that when they came together in the pine grove at the palace all those years ago, they were discovering a new teaching coming together. This is what Yashodra is telling. Like the whole story is being narrated by Yashodra at Prajapati's deathbed of what has gone through and how they all became nuns and how the awakening happened to all of them. 
she is uh, she is narrating that story to all the women who were around uh, at the deathbed of prajapati so she says yashodra came to that she is telling her experience when they came together in the pine grove at the palace all those years ago they were discovering a new teaching coming together in the circle with a clear intention finding a way of being and speaking together so eshodra came to call this the practice with others a relational practice so circle of spiritual friendship and relational practice has formed see how the circle is evil is evolving slowly so let me just say yashodra's were wise words because you know she beautifully mentions in the daughter beautifully mentions in the book so when you step into the sacred circle you practice a new way of being with others in your life in deep listening and a new way of speaking that vibrates with the ring of shared truth you bathe in the well of compassion i remember the view beautiful words of prajapati we are our temples even patri sir says right we are our temples all of us who were there began to feel stronger more fully alive being held in the circle of care and concern a circle for each and for all the well of compassion available for one and all more balanced and grateful for each other gratitude practicing this mindful relationship with others was the center of our lives and we came to understand at the center of each and every precious and whole human life not standing alone but with others with the trees the grove the stones and the dirt and the minerals and the animals and the birds and planets with all living things this is the nature that is what connecting to the nature is with all those who have passed on who have been born and those still to be born without knowing it we had lived through another ripe condition and began to sense the immense power entering the circle of compassion see how they have been evolving the circle of compassion so as a, a earlier ma'am was talking about how in hospitals they have grief uh, like communities and circles right to help the people in need so there are grief circles in lot of hospitals to help such people dealing with sudden or traumatic loss loss of a baby or a child or a family member suddenly to either violence illness suicide what ramkrishna sir was talking about yesterday where some have lost loved ones gradually with lingering illness or injury for example cancer they have some people might have a family member going through a long illness and many have been through the long sorrow of the chronically suffered loved ones so the pain is not just for people who are going through the illness but also the, the family members who are caring for them they need to cope up with that too because they do not know when the last day is going to come right so in the story in the uh, in the second book the reflections there are two stories uh john story where you know uh, john's wife john's wife who had who was diagnosed of cancer who lived for 18 years after her first diagnosis of breast cancer and she was diagnosed at uh, uh, during the childbirth of her second child and remission lasted for 5 years her name is kelly and later she had a reoccurrence the doctors gave her 2 years survival but she lived for additionally 13 years she saw her son graduate from his high school 
and daughter graduate from college. But once that happened, she immediately died, which left her husband in grief. So the hospital suggested John to meet the grief council. And John was a successful CEO and a very high powered man. And he was not able to open up to and express his feelings to others. But later, with the warmth and the sharings of others, he slowly started feeling safe to warm up to the others. That is, atmosphere has been created in that sharings. And for the first time, he shared his feeling in the circle and he, he cried for, for his first time in his life. So he found out that healing was not linear. It is more like spiral because sometimes that grief used to come suddenly during his meetings and he used to just burst out and scream. And he was thinking that it was only happening to him. But when he came again, he, when he came again and shared the, his feelings in the circle, that's when everyone told, yes, that happens with me too. It's just being human. And that was a huge relief for them because he understood that that feeling is just human and it is a process and nothing is linear and it is and grief and coping up is spiral the healing process is spiral not linear and there is another beautiful story about martha if we have time i can okay uh, <clears throat> martha was a 54 year old mother who has uh, two children and worked in the film industry and was diagnosed with stage one cancer, breast cancer. She joined the best cancer support group at the guidance of her uh, uh, psychotherapist. But she didn't feel that what she was looking for in that group. So she joined an ongoing cancer group. Martha decided to have a double uh, metascomy because her mother died with breast cancer and father died with lung cancer as a positive preventive step. And when she came to that circle, she the level of honesty and intimacy was stunning for her. The commitment to being with each other's suffering, the intimacy and talking about body parts, because it was not easy for her. She being in the uh, uh, media, uh, film industry, and where, you know, uh, being pretty and body is very important, right? And she was having a very hard time and talking about that and the loss and disfiguration really helped her. How cancer impacted their relationships and sexuality. Survivors had survival guilt as well. But finally, her fears could be articulated and she was less terrified. The group experiences empowered her, speaking the power of shared journey, sharing her journey and the power, the spirit of facing suffering. And she survived breast cancer and left the group after seven years. So such beautiful stories. You know, we you might have come across so many people going through such things and come out of them and some might not have. But it's an ongoing process. And we all need to take care of our emotions, right? Because when we are in grief, when we are in grief, our emotions uh, play the key role, right? So emotions, if we don't express our emotions, our emotions harm our body. Anger weakens our liver, grief weakens our lungs, worry weakens our stomach, stress weakens our heart and brain, fear weakens our kidneys. On the contrary, love brings in peace and harmony, strengthens your mind and body. Laughter reduces stress, smile spreads happiness. And do you know, when the two ears are put side by side, it forms the shape of the heart. Interestingly, the word ear sits right in the middle of the word heart. 
the ear is a way to the heart so if you want someone's heart learn to listen to them because the past is like using your rear view mirror in the car it's good to glance back and see how far you have come but if you stay too longer you will miss what's right in front of you and thank you masters please take action and if you have gone through any difficult challenges in your life please ponder upon these questions would it help to find a circle of people focused on the same or a similar issue have this been a part of your ritual is there something in life right now that would benefit from your participation in the circle if not can you create one or imagine being a part of one steps that have taken in our relationships or families and communities can we more can we be more dedicated member of the significant community in our life we are being here right in this circle sharing our experiences our problems and we are there for each other thank you and uh, i open thank you, up thank you it's so beautiful slides and those wonderful words what you have put in those slides are so unique in its own nature and uh, masters as madhu ma'am said each one of us are there with our own struggles but i feel as she mentioned today a very important aspect or a concept circle of compassion probably we have it as a circle of our family we share our problems but as far as my experience goes i feel like friends are one who can be there forever without judging you without thinking about what is right and what is wrong and yet they will give you or bring beautiful you know solutions to those struggles but the question is how many of us how many of us ask for that help and how many times we go for that to receive help rather than just thinking that we are you know been struggling why me and why me and why me why but if you look at even the prince and buddha had the same situations the struggles no matter whether they are prince or king or king queen everyone is there everyone is there with their own struggles no one is spared right from gurus and masters till the students isn't it but the kind of what madhu ma'am today put in the circle of compassion probably probably if any one of you all could have your own you know struggles put it out and maybe on the 13th august what we are planning as a discussion each one of you if you are you know courageous because i say it is takes a lot of energy to put out this is what i am with then probably this entire circle can help out with the solutions what can be a solution a b and c and that's what we are encouraging as a circle of compassion out of this entire book club thank you madhu ma'am thank you yeah masters you you are free to share your experiences because masters alone i can say but we together we can talk right alone i can enjoy the story but together we can celebrate the story right alone i can smile but together we can laugh so let's all talk celebrate and laugh please share your experience masters thank you uh, madhu ma'am uh, uh, your voice is very soothing and uh, beautiful preparation and uh, narration of the story um i want to share one incident today I, today morning uh, actually on friday night a group of friends met and uh, one of the friends didn't come to the party and uh, they were talking about uh, him being alcoholic 
and uh, he drinks too much from the day to the night and every time he's on so i called him yesterday you know after two and a half years after knowing and i said hey man what's going on you know i want to talk to you i heard about it you know i want to help you we want to come to our uh, spiritual tablet meditation actually in fact today morning <laughs> i sent him the link not that i know that you're going to bring this topic about uh, addiction then when this thing came up oh it's a miraculous start of mine happened today and you came up with that uh, topic of uh, addiction here that's one thing so addiction in my opinion doesn't need to be alcohol uh, or drugs or there are more uh, things that we do mentally that addict us so for example myself before i came to meditation four hours of my time is addicted towards a tv to follow politics and sports you know they're not bad but my mind is occupied i have a lot of biases and judgments a lot of fear, a kind of negative energy when my favorite team is not playing well and i wasn't doing other things you know total focus whether my daughter or my wife wants my time in those four hours nothing doing they just to get away from me so that's was that's was mine now i don't have a cable i don't watch sports that i've been doing for 27 years fully addicted without that there's no life for me so now my tv is mute so there are several things like that you know we're being like control freak that's kind of addiction for us you know we want to control everyone in the family or kids or what not so there are several addictions but i think this is a beautiful platform to learn and cope up with those things as we focus on our own inner journey you know sometimes we don't know that it is an, it is that it is an addiction that we have so my soul searching and finding more on those things you know i won't say every one of us have some kind of addiction but most of us may have some kind of addiction that would, even drinking coffee 10 cups of coffee is an addiction so but I, again thank thanks again for a beautiful narration of this story thank you sir thank you ravi sir for sharing thank you ashala tamam yeah sorry it's asha yeah masters anyone wish to share yeah i don't see any other hand raises okay thank you masters for making this time lakshmi ma'am yeah uh, whenever uh, you guys are doing with uh, compassion circle or uh, any meditation towards that uh, let us have a going forward when you are going to do that then uh, ask them to feel that they are actually uh, being next to each other and they are holding the hands so yeah is one of the beautiful uh, uh, thing that i learned uh, um, for the compassion circle because that is what ashodhara ma'am uh, actually did in her dynasty the people has to hold the hands because whether it is virtually or physically uh, they need to hold the hands next to each other and they need to help each other so that is the beautiful thing um that is the one which made me to uh, go through this book uh, you know uh, so let us uh, do that practice of going forward when we do the meditation so let us uh, uh, hold the hands rather than just being in the meditation posture uh, let us all uh, hold the hands next to each other and let us do that meditation uh, from next week onwards yeah thank you thank you ashok sir we'll take care of that yeah masters but uh, would really request to bring up your own struggles if at all you think this circle of compassion yeah probably even we will hold on to the recordings if someone wants to just hold into the circle and not let the information out even we will close down the recording there's no need of yeah absolutely we that's so the individual encourage. we truly yeah. encourage this entire 40 people plus or whatever number it is truly to bring their own struggles and if we could really make the difference that is what the uh, real intent of all these four masters putting an energy and effort 
to really make that happen here not just as vinya mam said to in today's era it is not buddha as sangha but it is the entire sangha as buddha yeah thank you masters and vardini mam yeah yeah pranam mam to everyone madhu mam beautiful sharing they explain very well with a good articulation and all that and the voice is also very melodious and all of us could feel that compassion while listening your story of ashodara very good and interesting yeah, i wish you all the best for other also i think hope you are doing the next session also i think next week you also you know yeah good to listen to you thank you thank you everyone madhu ma'am thank you so much beautiful narration beautiful slides as your voice was so you know soothing the same way with the slides my uh, you know uh, suggestion would be no matter who it is whether men or women you know men tend to not to express they feel keeping with them will help i mean uh, show their weakness it is not so we must not forget all of us are humans at the end of the day so helping each other will help us grow more you know be more stronger so expressing yourself is the main intention of this book club and we are bringing uh, you know our topics you know stitching together this matter to address that issue because this era needs you know uh, that kind of circle and i uh, you know from the from the bottom of my heart i thank all the four of you uh, and sorry vinda ji i couldn't join yesterday it was beautiful it seems my net connections are issue and today madhu ma'am very beautiful you are there simply you are you know uh, superb no words to explain thank you so much thank you special tablet uh, platform and ashok sir thank you love you all thank, thank you nena ma'am no need to say sorry we have recordings we all have our own things going on we can understand and uh, madhu ma'am what can i say beautiful view i just kept feeling like listening to you like everyone has said here your voice is so sweet soothing like you're telling a little child the story how beautiful you have said and your slides are exceptional very very neat it was clear i could see everything the message was clear and uh, of course deepa ma'am your budget is so melodious and it started off all of us on the right note so thank you all and uh, rightfully ashok sir suggested yes from next time let us use this concept right such a beautiful circle of compassion as what well. they doing we can do any circle and there is power in circle and like you mentioned all the circles that happen in hospitals or alcoholic uh, alcohol anonymous so mm -hmm. let us gain strength from each other the, and uh, in that story when you were narrating how your shodhara like initially just wants to talk 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 i feel sometimes i am like that too i'm always wanting to say and very rarely i listen so this practice how beautiful you have said you know from center she comes and joins and becomes one and that's when the circle everyone starts you know the energies become one i think that is a strong message for me also and for all of us you know when we start listening because that's when we know we are not the only one and she when she heard naila's story then she started actually realizing what she has her baby is still alive and that's when she actually started you know getting out of her grief so i think we hearing somebody else also feeling the same always gives us strength and in you feel I me mean, why is this very experience but such great uh, benefits but slowly again i was going down but i after i shared it many they said this happens it is common we have to keep doing it so share
sharing helps all of us understand what we are going through. We are not alone. You know, each of us may have different, but still there is some common link. So thank you for this beautiful concept. Again, Lakshmi, ma'am, thank you for suggesting this book and all the other masters who are helping and guiding us. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, Vandiana. Yes, for no, ma'am. Keep it. Yeah. Thank you, Madhu, ma'am. Thank you very well. You articulated so soothingly and uh, introduce very good concept in this session, like circle of compassion. Uh, so Vindya ma'am was, uh, you know, introduced like how she was in, uh, you know, reject rejection mode. And you brought into like, you know, how she came out of that and slowly in a listening mode. So, which is very, very important to see the gradual changes. We usually, we don't, uh, pay attention to these uh, little things, but it's very important how she was able to come out and whose help she took and what is our role. We need to understand if we are in pain, we need to seek help. If we, if somebody else, our neighbors are in, in pain, we have a key role in, you know, in calming them and uh, bring them out of their pain. So beautiful concept. Thank you, thank you so much, Madhuna. Thank you very much. Thank you, Swarnama. Yeah, Ravi sir, do you have something to share? Yeah, so uh, um, I, I forgot to mention, uh, I work for a hospital here and we have a Sadhguru Center for a Conscious Planet uh, in our hospital. I, I obviously don't know much about it. I just came to know this week. I want to learn more about it, or what exactly it is about. And uh, second is request to Madhu Ma'am, your voice is so soothing and somebody mentioned that you, you, you can sing. So maybe before we end this thing, maybe you can uh, sing some small thing. There you go, Madhu. You should sing. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, sir, Ravi, sir. Now all the tension is over, Madhu. Sing. Yeah, tension is over. Just relax and uh, let it fly. And uh, in the a couple of lines. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll do. Yeah, uh, let's, yeah, let's let's take the last the two people, and then we'll there. Yeah. Um, there are Gayatri, ma'am. Can you unmute yourself? Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Madam, ma'am. Wonderful, wonderful narration. It was so beautiful. It was just like a uh, ball of us with your soothing voice, and for so your voice is so captivating. We all listen to you like, like small children. And uh, we could feel when you're talking about compassion and your voice, when you're telling about Naila's story, we could feel uh, Naila's loss, grief, you know, could feel her pain. And you beautifully went over the narration and beautiful slides uh, and uh, telling the importance of the circle that everyone should have in our, as a part of our living, you know, maybe it in workplace, have your small circle to discuss, you know, where you want to share one's own feelings or in your family or in a cousin's group. It is so, so important. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Jaguti ma'am. Yeah. Madhu ma'am, beautiful yeah. ma'am. Very, very na nice narration. And uh, I was always telling you to sing, but you are not listening to me. See, now you have to sing today. And uh, that is why the, our Patriji sir emphasizes on listening to other masters' experiences, right? To help us to heal ourselves from listening to others. So that is the circle of compassion here. You have beautifully explained it. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Madhu, ma'am. Thank you, Deepa, ma'am. And thank you for singing the song. Divine morning and divine evening to all the beautiful masters, souls. Uh, I would like to add only uh, two to three uh, words in this beautiful session. Madhu, ma'am, lots of thanks for the beautiful oration and explanation. Uh, the session was very healing and soothing type. 
the uh, biggest advantage of the uh, circle of compassion is i think that uh, it prevents uh, the victims uh, of uh, any type of grief from being addicted to any uh, wrong things and it also uh, uh, prevents uh, uh, by uh, making the uh, making us a victim of any psychosomatic ailments as it is uh, well known that uh, uh, more than 90% of the ailments are psychosomatic so if we share our thoughts in uh, such uh, group of compassion uh, all the misunderstandings and negative thoughts are uh, released and we uh, come to the correct uh, mindset we make our mindset uh, improved and uh, thus we uh, stop others and ourselves also from becoming victims of unnecessary psychosomatic ailments so uh, this is i think the most important uh, point which i would like which i like to share uh, as uh, nowadays most more than 90% of the population including all age groups are becoming victims of uh, such uh, psychosomatic ailments so thank you madhu ma'am for the beautiful and um, very useful session lots of thanks ma'am thank you thank you jagati ma'am what you said is very true as long as we are keeping our emotions or grief or whatever pain we are going through inside a beat at even at school people go uh, kids go through issues right the peer pressure or bullying and if they don't share with their parents or anyone a friend at least you know they are holding up all those things in their mind and then they make their own you know patterns and judgments of their own and they closed up close out and that is what it starts right it and this can happen at any time not just for kids it could happen at college too and even at other places too right so it's and then they take help of psychia you know psychiatrist so we need not go there this group here with sharing with sharing our whatever it is we are going through you know we can come out of it together we are there to listen everyone is here is there to listen and we can help each other just like the compassion of love which is there madhu ma'am you brought a yeah. beautiful point uh, about uh, you know in school schools how they need to share i have been in school and even the body system you mentioned our school had that you know uh, the especially the most needy students special needs students and other students they had a body and they connect with their age group much better than you know with teachers or and the amount of students who used to go to counselors all the time i used to watch and i used to wonder how much they must, and this was only middle school how much they must be going through so sharing definitely uh, you know we need these compassion circles and or you know some kind of circle concept uh, for those students too and college students too come in uh, yeah great thought thank you and true and if you are not comfortable because we are recording please let us know we can stop the recording and we can still share and help each other and if you don't want to share in a group like this we have our counseling sessions every saturday morning please come there there are so many counselors ready to help you know take take that help share your story we can all help each other because we are growing together as well we learn from you and you are giving an opportunity for the counselors to help you for them to learn as well and do mind hello yes madhu ma'am yes thank you so much it was a very 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 beautiful session i just have this question and i always always struggle with this question i do have like a group where like you know i can share and they can share with me and you know all sorts of things and it feels very good and i feel very relieved when i share with them and like vice versa but i always have this question that if we share if we keep on sharing won't that doesn't that mean that you know we are giving energy to the you know to our to our griefs and to our fears because with grief there are fears as well associated 
and then we keep sharing those things and then you know we give unnecessary energy to those so like you know how would you differentiate between like you know giving the energy to the to to this and you know having like you know and still having a positive outcome from sharing so first thing you talked about you are scared about something right so first if you address oh. that what you are scared about which comes from is it from relation relationships or what is the source from there we can go and if grief is for uh, because of pain mm-hmm. or loss or a loss or if you're scared of a job like some people might lose their job right so what kind of scared is that and where is the grief coming from when you touch that root cause everything can be solved but if you don't address that because your voicing out means you are addressing it right and also where you are addressing that that also and maybe any any of the seniors ma swarna ma'am you want to say something about that madhu ma'am let me add one statement then swarna ma'am can add because i said this yesterday also indu ma'am we are talking about not every little kind of thing but extreme sufferings like how what you showed that i went through and here also uh, you know what is like you know not going out from you it is there and like i said yesterday everyone we all suffering doesn't go away just like that it will be with you you have to accept it only when you face come face to face you accept it then and you get the whatever the lesson you need to get from it or you overcome it then you move on otherwise it will keep living with you inside so um, yes you're right about negative energies we shouldn't give but at the same time if it resides inside you in the in your subconscious you're still carrying it with you so we have to address it we have to try to get positive also you know you talk about it but others are giving you input and slowly you're seeing the you know how to get over it so we are also getting just like uh, in this example when yashoda was going on talking talking it seemed negative right but then you saw how slowly um, uh, uh, prajapati slowly changed her t- telling her to listen to others so there is both it's not just you saying and giving all going on about yourself and going in a spiral but being in a circle that's where the circle and you know listening helps so being in the right that's kind of a circle who can understand your sorrows or mm-hmm. who can understand your grief someone who has gone through this you know someone who's experienced okay, got in this yeah so it helps got it okay all right and- Okay. not the ones who like i said yesterday also death many people in india have noticed even in my own family when there's death some come just to sit and you know in i think in african culture some there are these criers they just come and sit and cry they they have that uh, for death they go and they call something i forgot the name so it's that is not what we are looking for we are looking for someone who can empathize and who's already been through this and give us some pointers to get out of that grief so see when we talk about such things alcohol addiction is a group where everyone is going through the same problem helping each other just like vindhya ma'am mm-hmm. said and grief circles are someone who has lost their family members or someone going through their family members are going through issues right chronic illness so helping okay. each other so if you find such a group where you can be a power to them and they can shed their light onto you and you can help each other and the other thing yeah, is yes like, ma'am indu ma'am sharing it with a uh, right person is very important that's what i like you know i think i'm yeah. missing the point yes. yes yeah yeah and once they share their wisdom you understand that and act upon it yeah. taking action with awareness of course yeah only then you can move forward mm-hmm. all right Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All the best, sir. Thank you. And Thank you for the time. We will learn so many things in this story as the story goes forward. How to come out mm-hmm. of it? This is we are just addressing pain, right? And in the story, there are so many. They have Yashodra has talked about the ways to come out of it. Maybe stick stick to the sessions. You might find your answer here itself. Yeah. You need not look yeah. for some things. Of course. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah, thank you.
सुनना सुनना मैम Ardu ma'am, I know you. We are beyond time, and unless Swarna ma'am, are you ready? If you're ready to talk, I'll let you. <laughs> There's one more thing. I just wanted to. We're talking of circles. So, in schools, uh, I, I just remembered. Uh, there, you know, these things happen. Suicide happens, and we. You might have heard right many times, and the way these schools here, uh, they have a whole. you know framework set around it because they know these are really difficult situations for students especially young minds right and some of them are very close to that person who committed suicide and so there are rumors which go on so there's so many things they start handling they have this protocol so the counselors immediately they call them in circle you know groups and sit and then they want they ask them to share whatever is going through their mind you know are you afraid what happened and so i think i have seen real uh, benefit in those sharings uh, because otherwise it's just gossip each one says something someone says something people are some are scared some are afraid they go into depression but handling it right there and again i said right group of people with the counselor guiding guiding it we uh, you have to actually see those sessions i'm saying it's there is a uh, it's all very well handled by the counselors and it affects everybody we see the whole energy of the whole school go down for few days because that suicide has happened and for them to slowly come out of it and then they come out and there are few who are very close and always uh, you know it takes them much longer but i just wanted to point it out um, and we can discuss later next time some other time so thank you Sorna ji, you are unmute. You are, you know, unmuted. You can talk. Oh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, I think uh, all uh, all of the masters are shared whatever I wanted to say. But yeah, uh, true. You we think that uh, if we talk those negative things or grief, then you know we are putting energy, giving energy to those uh, those feelings. But it's not true. We have to express. let it out went out all the pain and sorrow and everybody will listen, let them listen even though we may not able to give the solution but when you when went out the half the problems are solved so and uh, if nobody is there to discuss sometimes we feel so since we are in this meditation we know uh, some affirmations so sit in the meditation and self love when you have self love because at that time some emotions are going on it's not our mistake or nobody's mistake is just there from the past karma or from you know past uh, those uh, past life memories they just coming you know sometimes i used to feel you and i used to get is some fear like hey nobody i'm all right nobody said anything today and i am not thinking but all of sudden it comes then i understood yes those are maybe you know they are coming to the surface as we do more practice more meditation some will overcome and some will come to the surface so we have to overcome so yeah let it go we should not give an attention it's coming understand and just be gentle to yourself and just meditate on self love any pain self love will solve the problem and if you are getting some angry on another another person it's not unfair and you know something then call that soul and sit make them sit in front of you and talk to that soul so you know this is what you should not do that why you are doing so say all the words that you wanted to say uh, you know then after meditation that you know you go to deep you have a conversation and then you will you will, you don't need to say anything to that person it's gone so these all are like some those people are giving you these experiences because you need to go through that pain you need to learn the lesson so those things so just some things we can um, do but the other things when we cannot able to do then you know we have to reach out if it is like keep going going circular if you are entering into circular loop every day why it is why it is then yes 
we have to reach out to the right group as um, deepa ma'am and vindya ma'am everybody said so talk to the only right people who can understand and give the positive uh, information right so those only we have to share we can't share with everyone so yeah thank you masters so utilize this uh, platform we are all here to share each other and care each other and love each other so thank you very much thank you thank you madam ma'am again yeah thank you everyone